Good afternoon. Welcome to the Preservation Board. I am going to call a roll to determine who's here. Commissioner Fathman, are you here? Here. Commissioner Colleen, are you here? Yes. Commissioner Byzantiner, are you here? Yes. Still? Yes. Commissioner Hamilton, are you here? Here. Commissioner Vines, are you here? I'm here. Did I overlook a commissioner? No. Okay. Commissioners, has anybody looked at the minutes from the last meeting? It'll be August 28th. I did look at them. Do you have a motion? I move to we approve as presented. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Those are our minutes. Commissioners, looking at the agenda for tonight, are there any additions to this agenda? No, sir. Okay. Would you mind if I rearranged the agenda and made took agenda item D first? Fine with me. I recu recuse on C, sir. Okay. Any other recusals for tonight? Okay. Let's begin then. Calling agenda item D, One Fine Arts Drive. Good evening. I'm Dan Krasnoff, Cultural Resources Director, and the first item on our agenda tonight is number one, Fine Arts Drive. I'll try to be a little louder. What? Actually, that's not a problem. <laughs> um, so this agenda item is uh, kind of a, a one that, a type that doesn't come to the board very often. Uh, we see a lot of permits in our office under uh, part 4, section 52 of the ordinance 64689. And these are for encroachments in the public right-of-way. And usually these items are something like a business that wants to put a patio out in front of their, uh, a restaurant that wants a patio seating area out in front of their restaurant, or someone wants to put a canopy out in front of their building over the sidewalk. That same section of the ordinance actually covers um, things like public art when they're built in the public right-of-way and paid for by a private entity. So tonight we have a proposal from the St. Louis Art Museum to construct a, or install a uh, Richard Serra sculpture in the roadway in Fine Arts Drive in front of the St. Louis uh, Art Museum. Um, the project is one that the staff is recommending support for, and I stay recommending support because I want to be clear about what what you're actually doing here tonight. The, the jurisdiction over public rights of ways under the Board of Public Service and includes entities like the Streets Department and the Parks Department. So technically what you are doing is making a recommendation to them because they have the final say about what goes on in the public right of way. Commissioner Hamilton, are you listening carefully? Uh, I am. <laughs> that, that, that may be useful later. <laughs> so uh, with that said, um, I have a degree in historic preservation and not a degree in art or art history. So I'm going to leave the discussion about the work itself to the, um, to the folks in the art museum, but I would just say that um, I think it's an exciting project and the staff recommends support for it. Would it be possible to bury all the Sarah sculptures? Oh, Richard. Hmm. <laughs> You'll have to talk to the Board of Public Service about that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, let's hear from the owner. And you're welcome to arrange your presentation anywhere you want. You know who you've brought with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan, for the introduction, and thank you all for hearing us um, today. I'm Brent Benjamin, the director of the St. Louis Art Museum. It's a pleasure to present this uh, project to you, which, as Dan said, is the installation of a, of a, of a, a sculpture by the American sculptor Richard Serra um, in Fine Arts Drive. And if I could have the first slide, please. Do you have his address? So this is the aerial view, of course, of the art museum with the Cass Gilbert uh, 1904 building there in the center, the recent addition um, to the east, to the lower right of the screen. And in the red circle is the proposed uh, location of this sculpture, which is, as you can see, in the center of Fine Arts Drive, um, on axis with the center of the road um, to the east and the west, and on axis with the front steps of the museum, of course, the rear of St. Louis's horse, um, um, in the uh, north-south direction. Uh, and then Art Hill, of course, to the right. Next slide. 
No, one back. One back. So this is the road surface as it currently exists, and as you can see, not only um, has the, uh, the, the, the surface of the road eroded in a way that's not very aesthetically appealing, but if you look across the slide at the far slide, uh, those are drains uh, that were meant to um, remove uh, water from the road surface and from the plaza that it's around the statue of St. Louis. Um, those drains have failed and no longer work. Uh, they've not only become a safety hazard um, in regard to tripping, um, and certainly for bicycles, uh, but also they're an eyesore. And you can see that the current um, solution to preventing people from tripping over them is the bicycle rack um, that is there as a sort of a semi-permanent uh, feature. Um, so there is a, a, a major remediation that is um, desired as a part of this. You see, I think maybe just faintly, the pink string that's running across the road. That is the diameter of the sculpture, which is about 26 feet um, in diameter. Let's have the next slide, please. Um, this is the sculpture. Uh, Richard Serra, of course, is an artist well known to St. Louis because here on Permanent View in the city are not only Twain, which is from the middle of his career, uh, but also more recently Joe, which is in the courtyard of the Pulitzer Foundation, which is a quite recent work. This uh, uh, sculpture in, the, in question, which is entitled to encircle base plate, hexagram, right angles inverted, dates from 1970 and is his first uh, major outdoor sculpture. This is the work as it was initially installed on 180th Street um, in the Bronx. Um, and you can see it's a 26 foot wide circle that is meant to span essentially from the edge of the road to the edge of the road um, with, uh, it's an L-shaped piece of uh, steel. Um, which is um, half of it is installed with the uh, lower, the foot of the L showing, and the other half is installed um, in the reverse. So um, uh, you don't see it, but it's there um, in the ground. Um, Richard Serra is probably the most important living sculptor um, in America and one of the most important sculptors um, in the world. The, this is a, a sculpture that's meant to be subversive. Um, it's meant to play with the idea of sculpture as a, a, a sca statue of a, a nude or a horse that sits on a pedestal and is looked at as an object. So of course, not only does this sculpture not sit on a pedestal, it is actually not much of an object at all. It's more like a drawing in the surface um, of the road. It's also meant to play with your idea of the experience of sculpture. So instead of walking up to it and engaging with it visually, you're meant to experience the sculpture by driving over it. And it is very much intended that traffic drive um, over this sculpture. And it's a uh, new, really a new conceptual idea of what sculpture can um, and should be. So it is flush with the road and doesn't have any physical presence except for what you see on the surface of the road. This is, by the way, it was, it was uh, made in 1970, was on the cover of Art Forum, which was the leading publication on contemporary art in the 70s. This was March 1971. So immediately after its, after its uh, installation, it was recognized as a really critical work um, in the history of sculpture. Next, please. So the sculpture has a history of display in St. Louis. It was purchased by Jan and Ronnie Greenberg, um, who gave it to the Art Museum. Um, uh, uh, in about 20 years ago, it was installed in Laumeyer, and that's the uh, upper left of the slide. You can see it was slightly larger than the road surface in which it was installed, and that was not a great solution. Um, and then um, about a decade ago, the museum decided to install it on its site and brought it back um, into Forest Park. Um, and you can see on the lower left and on the right uh, that, as as it was installed, in this case, on axis with the back porch of the art museum. And it was there until we um, uh, made the sculpture garden there as part of the renovation and the expansion of the museum back in 1913. So it's not been on view since we broke ground um, on the expansion. Next, please. So the idea um, and the proposal is that we install this um, in Fine Arts Drive. We've been touched touch base with the uh, artist himself. This is the site um, he would prefer, um, uh, located on axis with the front steps. The road is wide enough to accommodate um, the sculpture and engineering studies are underway right now um, in terms of thinking about how exactly that would affect the surface of the road, how the drains would be reconfigured, which is on the city's uh, list of work to do anyway, um, and how that would happen um, as a practical matter. And I'm going to ask my colleague, Jeanette Faust, who's the director of collections um, at the museum, to come up and join me now and give you a few more details about uh, the method of installation. Jeanette? Well, first, um, uh, we also want to mention, too, that uh, situating the sculpture on the site 
um, really uh, adds it and adds St. Louis to a new prominence as, as really a, an area of importance in the works of Richard Serra. Um, if you could show the next slide. We already have several works by Richard Serra here in St. Louis. The museum owns an untitled rubber piece from 1968. And of course, I think you all are familiar with Twain, which is installed not far from here. And then, as Brent mentioned, um, the Joe, the Sarah sculpture installed at the Pulitzer Foundation. So this sculpture would take its prominence and its place with those. Um, the next slide is actually a drawing. We've done some preliminary investigation, so we do know that the sculpture fits in this location. And you can see uh, the drawing shows Fine Arts Drive. To the south is the museum, and of course to the north is the statue of St. Louis. It is 25 feet, 4 inches in diameter. Um, it's tight fit, so we like to look at the possibility of uh, possibly relocating the drain. Uh, that's right, that's the black line right to the north of the sculpture. It's already been flagged by the park as something that needs to be replaced. Um, so we need about a foot uh, or less of space, um, so the drain relocation is an option or uh, possibly even widening the road a little bit. Um, and then we'd also like to look at the, um, potentially replacing the concrete surface with asphalt to kind of fit more in line with the artist's original intent for the work. So we really haven't gone too much farther on the installation part because, you know, uh, the care and maintenance of art, we know. The care and maintenance of Fine Arts Drive is not really our area of expertise. So it seems like this is just a wonderful opportunity for us to collaborate on a project that would benefit the museum the park, the city, and visitors to Art Hill. So we'd love to hear your thoughts and answer any questions that you all might have. Benjamin, is that your presentation? That's our presentation. Commissioners on the right. Commissioner Chrysantainer, you, as an engineer, this, this project must appeal to you or <laughs> horrify you. <laughs> well, I th I, no, I think it's a good project. I think uh, it would be advisable probably to try to address that drainage. Yeah. Side, but I person seeing it when it's in. Sure. Commissioner Robinson, this is the, the opposite of what you usually like. It's, lo <laughs> it's, it's, lo it's low profile, no one will notice it. It's almost below the surface, not surely and ostentatious. <laughs> you, you okay down there? I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> Melanie, do you, do, do you have I deep, think it's wonderful. I think deep and it, probing questions? Well, just an observation that when you're driving over it, you know, in your mind and conceptually and all, you'll be knowing what's going on underneath and it's hidden, but it's there. And it's just wonder, it's exciting. And for it to be in a park that nobody, you know, not many people go to, as many uh -huh. as they will be going by here, it needs to be there. Commissioner Vines, will this be a t-shirt soon? <laughs> I like it. Um, I do have one quick question. Um, sure. it, it sounds like it's moved around a lot since it was uh, it has. You know, completed. So is this ostensibly like a permanent installation here? Yeah, I think, you know, permanent is with streets, you know, we all realize that, that you know, permanent is a relative sort of concept. So I think what we would be doing is, um, you know, the museum would continue, of course, to own the sculpture. The city would continue to own the street. We would arrange, the structure would likely be a loan from the museum to the city. And I think we'd be thinking in terms of an initial term of maybe five or ten years with an automatic annual renewal following that. Um, and then probably our loan agreement would specify if the city wanted us to remove it at some point that they would have to give us a certain amount of number of days of notice so that we could actually, you know, uh, mobilize and get that done. Um, but that would be, that's how we managed the Henry Moore loans when they were at the ends of the promenades in Art Hill. Um, and that worked very well. That's great. Mr. Chairman, I need to recuse myself. My firm does work for the Art Museum. Okay. Had you been timely, we would have known this already. I apologize. Okay. You got that? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Hamilton, you have questions? Nope, I like it. Okay, then do you have a motion to make? I guess. <laughs> this is a makeup motion. Okay, let's. <laughs> um, the motion is that uh, the Preservation Board grants support for installation of the sculpture and roadway in front of the St. Louis Art Museum. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? <laughs> yeah. We both want a second. Okay, oh. hey, so who wants the second? Melanie. <laughs> Melanie wants the second. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. 
Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioners. Let's do agenda item A, 1827 to 29, California. <laughs> townhouses to be constructed <laughs> at 1820. Yeah, this is California, but actually should be Geyer, as it says here. This is the site. And um, <laughs> yeah, while what you have seen in your uh, agendas that were previously mailed out, this is a revision to that. So you're going to see essentially a new design this evening um, that was uh, created in response to some uh, comments from the neighborhood group. So this is the site. And it's an unusual site because it's backed up to the highway. And uh, so it has a really no access for it. There's no alley. So kind of an, uh, one, a point of discussion was how to handle the garages that were required for the parking. And Turn it on. Okay. So the parking will be accessed. This unit will come in from the alley. Alley here, the dead ends at that point. And the other the unit over here will come in from California. Which also <coughs> at this point. And a new drive will be introduced between the units in there. Okay. This is a, a perspective of two units, or the two buildings, and the front elevations. Uh, a model example has been identified, doesn't follow, the design does not follow it um, very closely, but it is characteristically, uh, uses characteristic historic elements and scale. Um, what we'll see from the alley and from California, which are exposed to street view, the interior elevation of both buildings that will face the driveway and the rear which will face the highway again we're looking at the side on the right looking west the context block is scattered side again we're looking this time eastward and there aren't directly opposite And the side is on the left. And this is the context east along Geyer at Oregon. And this is the opposite context. I'm sorry, this is the opposite context on the left, and then the context at Oregon's um, south. So that's where the historic character picks up again. This is directly opposite, which is fairly Good. vacant with a lot of new construction. Good job with the car. <laughs> so, the staff is recommending approval uh, based on the usual requirement that final um, design elements and um, final drawings be reviewed by the staff. We have not had a letter from the neighborhood, although it has been presented to the neighborhood, so possibly the applicant can address that. Okay, let's hear from... Question. I'm sorry. Um, does, Jan, does Fox Park have sort of loose uh, guidelines? Yeah, loose, much looser than Lafayette Square. Yeah. It, okay. it, it requires a model example. This does not closely follow the model example, but it picks up elements and scale from and it. And they're good with that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Next year. Okay. Now let's hear from the applicant. Uh, architect at a conflict uh, attending today, but I'm representative of the uh, owner of the property, Tim Shalito. So if you have any, yeah, Tim Shalito. And your address? Uh, 901 Washington Avenue. Okay. Tell us what you're doing. 
Uh, so the developer of this proposed project also owns the adjacent uh, structure to the west. And they came across this vacant parcel as a add-on to that uh, potential development as well. So the, what you see to the west is a single family or a single level structure with a two-story on the hard corner. Mm -hmm. So we're proposing to develop that as two townhome units. And this was a companion really tying in architecturally more towards the row houses off to the east to try to make the site work. So it is a challenging site in terms of access. Uh, and that's how we came up with the four unit design with the center drive. Have you read the staff's recommendation? Yes. And you're fine with the stipulation? Yes. Okay, commissioner's questions on this side? Oh, sure. Honey? No? Um, yeah, I just wonder where Tim's been. <laughs> yeah. Hiding from you. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually working with your dad. Really? A little bit, yeah. Kingsway? Want me to swear him in? No. <laughs> Commissioner's questions on this side? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Robinson, you've got a motion? Uh, yes. I move that the uh, board grant preliminary approval of the proposed new construction with the uh, stipulations that final plans and designs, design details uh, be approved by Cultural Resources Office. Would one of you please second this? I'll second. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Your Bisenter. Has, has seconded. Is there any discussion on this side? On this side? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, commissioners, let's do agenda item B, which is 429 North Euclid. This is another unusual site conditions okay. project. This is the rehabilitation of this building, which used to be Frontenac Cleaners, or used to house Frontenac Cleaners in the Central West End. Again, this is a preliminary review. And this is the site, and you can see that it also is landlocked. <laughs> and this is a power station that you will see speaks of in a moment. Site. So the, uh, what's at the top of the screen is the, or what was the existing building before exterior demolition began. Um, and the proposed reuse. This is a historic tax credit program. What I'd like you to note is that you can hit the right button. These two um, storefront bays will open, and but there, there will be a curb cut and a driveway to allow parking through there. They will be detailed similarly to the rest of the storefronts. And there will also be a large structure on the roof the pool. I don't believe that any of this will be street visible, but it is a relatively large construction. And very quickly, because I'm sure you're all familiar with it, um, that's the building on the left. And then we're looking south along Euclid on the right, and then north along Euclid and at Dressel's. This is the side of the building, um, which is adjacent to a parking area, not part of the building. <coughs> um, this is opposite, private place. And this is the lovely power station at the back. So again, the staff is recommending approval of the preliminary review subject to the usual conditions for staff review of final drawings. Questions for staff on this side? Questions for staff on this side. It looks like it already started. Has it? St I mean, yeah, they have started removing the perma stone. Okay. So you're saying those those storefronts will actually be garage doors that That's flip up? That's my understanding. Is that they'll be like a California door? So we've got the green light on that idea in the historic districts now. I don't have any letter from the neighborhood. I have spoken with Mr. Dwyer of the Design Review Committee, and they are in support of the project. But I can use that in other districts now. That I do. It's always about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, because the Central West End has this is a, a special nice circumstance. Yeah. If, okay. If you so come with a landlocked building set of rules that. <laughs> <laughs> just 
talking further, to visitator. Aren't further you? questions on this side? <laughs> Comments or snark? <laughs> Better be. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Okay, let's hear from let's hear from the applicant, please. Good afternoon. I'm Jason Johnson, and I'm the designer on the project. Jason, what do you want to do? Basically, exactly what's proposed, and I will tell you that we've spent a year and a half working long and hard in order to jump through the hoops in order to get the project where it is today. This is both the state and federal historic tax credit project, and so we had to work with John, John Sandor in detail in order to make sure that we got the, um, the garage door on the first level in order to fix our parking issue approved. It's actually a $48,000 uh, door in order to uh, make it look exactly like the uh, storefronts that are going to be adjacent to it. Um, that, that is that is the most bitterness I've ever heard attached yeah, to the exactly. word 48,000. Yeah, well, <laughs> so we, we have addressing that and then order to eliminate any sight lines, um, as you said, Jan, um, from the, the penthouse addition actually is pushed all the way to the rear of the building. It's the only place you'll actually see that is on the back. And um, when it's all said and done, I don't know if I'm more excited about the actual project or the fact that this couple we're pulling from the suburbs. She's a really amazing artist and getting him into the city in order to, to work uh, on the first floor as an artist and, and have a gallery there uh, in order to make this uh, otherwise hideous building something alive with art and um, bringing you know, additional people in from the county. So it's very exciting from my perspective, not only to do a cool project, but also bring people in that are really amazing to add to the fabric of the city. So. I'm available for any other questions, but it's, uh, you pretty much have seen the details of the project. Are, are we are ready to uh, move forward with permitting or sending in for the building permit. Uh, we have the structural drawings right now, so that's uh, falling relatively close behind if you guys approve the project. So, Are they coming from St. Louis County? They're coming from St. Louis County, yeah. What would it take to get people to come from, say, St. Charles County? <laughs> mm -hmm. Rome was only built in a day, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Good. Questions on this side, commissioners? So, so is there actually, so there's retail space or gallery space on yes. the first floor? So. Yeah. And the part of the reason why there, there's a doors on both, both ends that, are, that retract is because of the gallery in order to try to allow that other storefront to open up and spill out into the street when they have gallery shows and stuff. Questions on this side? I do. Um, the mural facing the parking lot? Mm -hmm. Hey, Jason. Hi. Um, is that going to go away? Or is no, as of right now, it's staying the okay. way it is, yeah. And then the other question is semi-related. The 70s era countertops that were in the front neck cleaners, are they gone already? They will be gone. <laughs> are they gone yet? I don't think they're gone yet, no. we got to talk. They okay. started the demolition in order to, and actually, I love them. Uh, okay. uh, Dan brought this up earlier, that once we remove part of the permastone, what's not actually showing in that drawing is there's actually a really cool strip of, of like old historic glazed tile that kind of runs up the, the vertical bands of brick in between the storefronts that we're actually anticipating. Um, re having somebody try to restore those. And so if that's a question that you think about when you drive by, that actually is the intent. The glaze is not, not vitrolite, but glaze. Yeah, actually glaze of tiles of some kind. Okay. They're still pretty filthy, so we don't know exactly <laughs> sure, but they're pretty cool. Know what color they are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Green and, green and red, I think, but not too Christmassy. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> Commissioner Vines, have you got a motion? Uh, yes, I, I move to, well, let me just see how it's written here. Um, I move to grant for preliminary approval, subject to review, um, made set forth by the Cultural Resources Office to support this project. Okay with you, Barb? Um, yes, I believe that was the motion for preliminary approval, subject to review of final plans and exterior materials by Cultural Resources. Is that was, correct? was that the motion? Correct. Is there a second? Second. second. It, there's four seconds. Yeah. <laughs> which I believe third. Is yeah, third is, and fourth. Because of that is, door. <laughs> is there any discussion on this side? No, sir. Any discussion on this side? That's good. Commissioner Vines, did you I did you make clear your wish to talk about those? Shade, <laughs> shade and countertops. Okay. I, I'm good enough. I like those countertops. Okay. Commissioners, there's a motion on the floor. It's been made and seconded. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Really? <laughs> okay. We're going to hear agenda item C, from which Commissioner Killeen has recused himself. So it's 2342 to 46, Menard. Okay. I promise this is the last one for me tonight. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is a proposal to construct two attached townhouses. 
um, at, at uh, 2342 Menard. This is the site. So there is a vacant parcel to the south, which is addressed in the design of the site elevations. Site plan. Notice also that the building to the north at the top of the screen <coughs> is set back considerably from the rest of the block. Um, the new construction will adhere to the building line of the street. The model example. Again, we have some deviation from an actual model example. You can see this is a two unit building uh, with two bays for each unit. Um, this is the proposal which is double that. However, the details are, are intended to replicate those of the model example and the Sulard Restoration Group has approved the selection of this design. Um, there are a couple of things that I would like to see altered to bring it a little bit closer to the original design and one is that the first story windows are fairly tall. Look at the model example, that's really not characteristic of it. And secondly, that we seem to have transoms at the plane of the facade and they should actually be set back to the door. But other than that, um, this is the either side elevations. The one on the left will face the vacant lot and is entirely brick. Um, the other one faces that building that's set back and at least about 50% of the building uh, brick will return. <coughs> and this is the rear elevation. Screen porch on the first story. Um, the Menard elevation in context for the adjacent buildings. And a little more developed streetscape. And a perspective showing buildings. This is the site currently. And you can see that it's, in a, it's a fairly intact block in Soulard. And very consistent in date and architectural style and materials. Again, the staff is recommending preliminary approval, subject to review of final plans and details by the staff. Questions on this side? Questions on this side? So the garages were okay? Yeah, the garages were at the back. Mike Killeen. Yes. Killeen, have you read the recommendation? I have. Do you have problems with it? No, sir, I do not. Questions for Mr. Killeen? One quick question. Is that a vacant lot um, next to it? There it looks like it's the side yard of the building to the south. So. Further questions? Commissioner Byzantine, have you got a motion? Okay. Um, yeah, I move that the board grant preliminary approval for the proposed new construction with the stipulation that the front facade be revised with shorter first story windows. Um, I'm not sure about the shallow recess. And the final plans and design details be approved by the Cultural Resources Office for compliance with the district standards. So, does, does your motion not include a shallow <coughs> recess? Um, Which I, I think is when you're really bad in school and <laughs> the teacher says you're going to get five minutes less recess. <laughs> um, I guess I'll, I'll include that in my motion that I'd like to talk about it. Is it in or out? Yeah. Okay, the shallow, the shallow recess okay. is in. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Commissioner. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think this is a very good project. I'm, I'm not sure about the shallow recess. I don't think we really talked about that in the in the discussion, as I recall. What was that? Unless that was. So, Commissioner, the the door is recessed, but it looked like the ransom above the door was at the face, but I think that that could just be a... 
today. <coughs> Page 22, though, looks like it's set back to me. Could, yes. I, could, could I clarify could that? I'm sorry. sorry. I, I passed over that in my presentation. I apologize. That is a, a suggestion by the SRG in their review. Um, it is something that we have used on other buildings <coughs> that are long to, in order to visually break it up. So, um, so you're trying to do that to make it look like they're actually semi detached? Look like slightly, yeah, two different buildings okay. instead of one long building. And you support that? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, so then, Jan, so then what was the thing about the transoms? Is that your design details you to address That's that? That's a design Got detail. It. Okay. Right. okay. Commissioners, there's a motion on the floor that's been made, seconded, and clarified. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Very much. Okay. Let's do agenda item E2055, Geyer. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. It's a new application. Makes it better. Let's find our stride. Just put the line down the middle of the boat. Yeah, that's what we're Okay. This is 2055 Geyer. This is over in McKinley Heights. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. We have here, Church. this is a, um, a building that is owned by the uh, Holy Trinity Serbian Church. Um, the building is in the McKinley Fox National Historic District and is non-contributing. When they did the district, the thing had been so mucked up and modified over the years that this building is not contributing. The church uses it for storage for the most part. Um, they use the land for some outdoor activities. And the building um, is pretty much obsolete. Again, it's been worked over a lot. I've been inside of it. Um, there's a sunken floor in there. And um, so for their purposes, they want to get rid of it and rebuild on the site. Um, so what they're going to do is essentially remove this guy and put back almost the exact same thing. So I'll give some context. It's just an aerial shot showing where we're at on the northern edge of the historic district, so right here. So here's, here's 44. Here's the church. So they occupy this. This is their lot that they use for their bank facility. So they do a lot of storage stuff inside this little building. Right there. Here's right. some context. Um, it's, really? It was built in the teens. Um, it fits the area um, in terms of materials. The scale is fine. It's kind of a blown out area to the, uh, to the west, and obviously the north is completely shot. Across the street, you have the church a little bit further south on Serbian Way. And this is their banquet facility they use. So again, this kind of shows you um, the little hatch is the existing building, and then the larger square is the proposed construction. So it gives them more space for storage, and then also an exterior canopy off the back of the building to uh, have some outdoor space. And this is going to be the street side. Uh, this is going to be the, the east side. Um, my recommendation is for a, um, our usual approval for um, looking through the uh, final details. The door is not the one we'll actually finish on. We're working with the, the owners now on the right kind of door for that because it will be kind of street visible. Um, and they're open to whatever our suggestions are on that. This is the west side. Again, it's all brick yeah. on the street visible sides. And the rear is, is siding. I do have a letter of support from McKinley Heights for this project. They're fine with it. The church met with them, and they understand the issue with the existing building, and they're fine with the current proposed design. So again, uh, I recommend that the board grant preliminary approval for the construction with stipulation that the final drawings materials be reviewed by our office. Commissioners, questions on this side? So just to clarify, Bob, that building you show in the photograph, this is an addition to it, <coughs> or that this is replacing? It's a replacement of. The bu this existing Placing. building is not a, it's a it's, in, it's a non-contributing building to the historic district. It was worked over uh, heavily, and it was, when they listed the, the uh, area as a, as a national district, it was not listed because the building has been so worked over. So it's, it's non-contributing to the historic district. So it's tear down and replace? Yep. Thank you. Yes, sir. Questions on this side? Thank you very much. Letter and support. OK, let's have the applicant. Hello.
Hello, tell us your name. Hi, my name is Zoran Kurtima. From and your address? 1910 Serbian Drive. Okay. And you've read the staff's recommendation? As is. Yes? You agree? I agree. Okay. Commissioner's questions on this side? Will you continue to have that fish fry over there if you build this? <laughs> Be more tasty. <laughs> I think we need to make that More juicy because <laughs> our equipment is getting bad, so you guys can get poisoned <laughs> if we don't get approval. Just okay. kidding. <laughs> Excellent testimony. We're going to come to the Serbia <laughs> Museum. I mean, we guys talking to lots of people about museums here tonight, so it's, it's going to be a little museum. Okay. I hope. Do the Serbians make chibapchichi too? Chibapchichi? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> That's probably okay. basically for Serb Fest. For Serb <laughs> okay. Festival, we are using them much. That's great. I love yes. your church. And anyway, thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's more than 110 years over there. So it's big history. Talking to a 20 years guy right there. So big history about it. Just a quick question for me, man. Um, it, do you intend to, or would there be an opportunity to use any of the building materials from the existing structure and the new construction? Well, we can cut. Um, that's not a requirement we would have. Oh, I, I was just curi saying. out of curiosity. Yeah. yeah, we are so flexible. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, the issue, um, they've already applied for their permit, and the brick size is wrong in the application, but oh. they, are, they know that and work with them. And if they wish to use salvage brick, that'd be great, of course. Okay. Um, so we can discuss that with them. Thanks. Melanie, a motion? Yes, I would like to uh, move that the Preservation Board grant preliminary approval for the new construction with the stipulation that the final drawings and materials be reviewed and approved by the Cultural Resources Office. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there a discussion? Commissioners, there's a motion on the floor that's been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Thank you much. Commissioners, we're going to take a five minute break to let our lawyer recover herself. <laughs> okay, commissioners, let's, let's convene again. There is a quorum present since the last time I called roll. Uh, Commissioner Richardson has arrived. Uh, yes. Commissioner Robinson has arrived. Commissioner Hamilton has arrived. Okay. It's weird. <clears throat> Let's call 2702 McNair. Andrea Gagan with the Cultural Resources Office. I'm going to tell the truth. Um, I need to enter into the record. Um, Enabling Ordinance 64689 is amended by 64925. And the Benton Park Historic District Ordinance 67175, as well as the PowerPoint in the agenda. What sort, of, what sort of an action is this? It's an appeal of, of a director's denial. Okay, commissioners, so we will be sitting in an administrative now. We will ask the witnesses to promise to tell the truth, and we will be building a record on which our decision is based. This is a 2702 McNair in the Benton Park Historic District. Um, the entire application is for a, a rehab of this building, um, but our only issue we're really looking at this, this afternoon is the um, dormer windows. This is just site. This is a detail of the existing dormer. And this is um, an example of the type of window they're wanting to use. Um, it's not the exact one, but uh, what I could find at the time. And there's also, I'll hand out, there's also, she also just gave some drawings of what, um, the section drawing of what that would look like. Um, basically, they are putting two units in this building and they are needing um, egress for bedrooms on the second floor. Um, basically, so they need to do, they want to do a casement window with a mullion instead of a double hung window. Um, and the other option would be to, to create, make the dorm bigger, which I'm not sure how much bigger that would have to be, but it would, I mean, probably be a significant difference. Um, uh, so, unfortunately, a casement like this isn't going to 
really look like a double hung because it's not, it's all in the same plane. There's no depth to the, the meeting rail isn't, I mean, there's no sash behind. Um, so it is gonna definitely change the, um, the look, a little more flattened appearance. This is just some context on either side and the context across the street. Um, I do have a letter from Tim Mulligan. Um, as just Tim M Mulligan, it's not from the um, <laughs> <laughs> association, um, as they hadn't been able to um, see it yet. You know why? Because Tim Mulligan is probably still talking about it. But he, he is in support of the, the egress, the casement windows for the egress. I love that um, basically, um, What's the problem? He, as I said, the wood casement windows with applied mulligan um, are to mimic the double hung. Um, closed windows will not have the same depth and appearance as double hung windows. Um, and they don't comply with the Fenton Park Historic District standards as they require <coughs> windows to match profiles and, and uh, size and dimensions um, and the muttons and everything. Um, so they don't comply, but uh, she is asking. Um, that's why they were denied. The, based on those findings, the Cultural Resource Office recommends the Preservation Board uphold the director's denial uh, of the application that does not, not comply with the district, district standards. Any questions? Just to clarify, she would like to keep the dormer configuration the same. That, that picture sort of confused me. Yeah. So she doesn't want to bunch two windows together. No, they're, they're rebuilding the dormers, but they will be the same as what they are But now. she'd like to install a window that makes it Right, they'll be, I guess they'll be slightly wider. Slightly wider and casement style so a fire person can get right. through there. Okay. Yeah. And Because to make a double hung that would meet egress, they would have quite a bit larger. Area. So if she, if we do reject her, what, can she just not have a bedroom up there? Or? Yeah, I mean, that would that would probably be the result. <laughs> and so and Tim Mulligan was for or against? He was, he was for, because he, <coughs> his, his basis was basically, he thought that making the dormers bigger would be worse than having an egress, casement egress window. Um, so I'm sorry, he was? Yeah. He was for the casement egress. He's, he's for the case, so he's, he supports the yeah, to make okay. this work. Thank you. Gotta have rooms and so Just trying to clarify. Questions on this side? Do you make the dormers bigger? Was your testimony the truth? They, yes. Uh, sorry, did Alderman Coder weigh in? What's large the dormer? Did Alderman Coder weigh in? It no. need to be. This is the window would have as Tim Mulligan. Tim Mulligan. That should be the name. I'm sorry. Did Alderman Gunther weigh in? Yeah. <coughs> so, just to correct the record, this is the ninth ward. The ninth. I think it takes her to seven. I used to be in seven. Okay. Let the record show that we're correcting the presentation that this is in, in fact the ninth ward. Okay, anything else? Else? Anything else? I'm sorry, one more thing. So does Tim Mulligan, does he have an official title anymore? Is the development committee still around in Benton Park? Or yep. did that, yes, it is? I is believe so. I think he just Building review committee his chair. own thing because they weren't able, they hadn't gotten to see it. Got it. Yeah, he's official. Okay. All nits picked? Yep. This side? Good. Thank you. Ms. McDonald? It's nothing official. <laughs> We haven't seen you in a while. No. Welcome. Thank you. Your name and address for the record, please. Anne, A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, McDonald, 2311 South 13th Street. Is your testimony going to be the truth? I certainly hope so. Okay. That's a yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. State your case, please. Okay. The case is that um, I have two bedrooms up there. I have two front doors, as you see. Had been a two-family. And to keep the dormers, obviously they must have been before you had to have egress windows, um, pretty much the same configuration. I use the casement windows. Heritage said that, um, I'm sorry, you're not Heritage. 
agricultural resources. <laughs> See, I told you you haven't been here in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Cultural resources would like uh, double hung. Obviously, I would do double hung. I think they would be a mistake. I think the dormers would be a lot bigger. Double, double hung egress, if I've given you one sheet, are three feet two inches by five feet one inches. So um, that would be a bigger window, a bigger dormer. Um, one of these windows is one over one, and the other one's two over two, two over something. Um, it's like two over an It's just, I think it's better to have the dormers in proportion to what they are. And I'm in this spot because I'm required to have egress windows. <coughs> Questions? Questions? No. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Commissioner Richardson, have you got a motion? I move that the Preservation Board um, overturn the director's denial uh, out of necessity for code compliance. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion made and seconded. Is there discussion? Our choices seem to be bigger dormers are doing this. Right. I like this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Commissioners, there, there is a motion on the floor. It has been seconded. And for the record, I will call a roll. Commissioner Fathman, do you vote yes or no? Yes. Commissioner Robinson, do you vote yes or no? Yes. Commissioner Richardson, yes or no? Yes. Commissioner Colleen, yes or no? Yes. Commissioner Byzantiner, yes or no? Yes. Commissioner Hamilton, yes or no? Yes. Commissioner Vines, yes or no? Yes. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yeses. <laughs> the director's denial is overturned. Proceed. Commissioners, do I hear a motion to adjourn? To move. Second. Discussion? Second. Then we stand adjourned. Thank you all very much.